take a look at these, magnets strong enough to attract each other through flesh and bone. In fact, they're so strong, you've got to be careful not to get your fingers trapped because their force of attraction is enough to break your finger. High strength magnets like these have only been around for the past 20 years or so, but more normal strength magnets have been manufactured for centuries. Shaw's in Sheffield is the oldest existing magnet makers in the UK, maybe even the world. Over 200 years ago, they started making magnets in a tiny workshop not very far from here, and the whole process was shrouded in mystery. First, the workers made bars of iron into the correct size and shape then took them upstairs to a special room. It was here that the bars were magnetised. But the workers weren't allowed inside, so they never knew how this secret process took place. Several hours later, the bars would be ready for collection, now mysteriously magnetic. Unfortunately, if anyone had been brave enough to take a peek inside, they'd have been sorely disappointed. This is all they would have seen. The pieces of metal were made into magnets simply by stroking them against an already existing big magnet. In fact, this is one of the secret magnets that Shaw's used. The question is, though, where did this come from in the first place? Well, one theory is, to make a piece of metal into a magnet, it would be heated up, pointed north and gently tapped. To make this nail magnetic, you'd need to heat it, then line it up with a compass and start tapping. So how does it work? Well, the Earth itself behaves like a magnet. It's surrounded by an invisible magnetic field with its own north and south poles. A compass needle lines up with these field lines and points towards the Earth's magnetic north. Lining up the nail with the Earth's magnetic field is the key to making it into a magnet. That's because you can think of a nail as having millions of tiny magnets inside it, all pointing in different directions. Tapping jiggles them and helps them line up with the Earth's invisible force field. When all the tiny magnets are pointing in the same direction, the whole nail becomes a magnet. It's time-consuming and very fiddly. Thankfully, there's a much easier way. This nail is definitely not a magnet. Here, let me show you. The easiest way to magnetise it is by taking a ready-made magnet and stroking it along the length of the nail, but always making sure that you do it in exactly the same direction. Now, watch this. See? Once again, the tiny magnets inside the nail are all jumbled. But stroking it with a ready-made magnet makes them line up. A quicker way of magnetising the nail uses electricity. Wrapping wire around it and passing an electric current through it has a magnetising effect. This is an electromagnet. The scanner makes the magnetism visible. The arrows show that an electric current through a coil of wire produces a magnetic field. See how similar it is to the pattern produced by a bar magnet. But the field produced by electricity through the coil is weaker. If the coil is big enough and the electric current is high enough, then the piece of metal will stay permanently magnetised. Take a look at this. There you have it. This factory uses electricity to make hundreds of permanent magnets every day. But what are they made from? Iron isn't good enough on its own, so they mix it with other metals, including nickel and cobalt. Any mixture of metals is known as an alloy. In the foundry, this alloy is heated up to 1600 degrees Celsius before being poured into a mould.
One mould makes about 20 horseshoe magnets. The first stage of magnetisation involves heating up the metal shapes again, then cooling them down in a strong magnetic field produced by the massive coils of wire that make up this platform. The electric field has a magnetising effect. Once they're painted, they're packaged up. The permanent magnets they make here go all over the world and end up in all sorts of places. So where do you find magnets today and what are they used for?